Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC Betting Show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the betting show for UFC on ESPN, Vicente Luque versus Bilal Muhammad. We're going to be breaking down the main event as well as another free play. So excited to break that down, but boy are we coming off an absolutely shitty, shitty performance last weekend. Boy, we couldn't, we couldn't hit waterfall and out of a boat last weekend. Uh, bad showing overall. We did hit on uh, Aljamain Sterling at plus 350 as a free play, but uh, we couldn't get in a groove on our client plays there. We did have Tisha Torres as our top 4% best butt pay, and uh, thought she had it. I thought she, you know, eked it out there in that third round, but it didn't matter either way. It was a losing night. We have not seen too many losing nights this year. Uh, out of 11 of the UFC events, we've cashed in on eight. So we got a lot of profit built into that, but we need to add to that this weekend. So excited to break it all down. And uh, for anyone who's new to this channel or or those who do watch, I always appreciate anyone who, you know, if you're subscribing, you're liking, you're sharing, you're commenting, all of that always helps this algorithm thing here. And uh, as well as just, I love the banter. Follow me at Kyle Anthony UFC if you want some conversations over there. But uh, we're going to be breaking down the main event now. We're going to get right into it. Vicente Luque versus Bilal Mohammed. Right now, we've got the line. We've got minus 170 on um, Vicente Luque, although I'm starting to see that in some books starting to tick up a little bit. Uh, on the other side, we got Bilal Mohammed. He's plus 145. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go down each fight for each fighter. Last three, see what we see, see if one fighter can expose the other fighter, and if the line makes sense to place a wager. So the first one we talk about here is Vicente Luque, and three fights ago, he fought Randy Brown. Interesting fight here when you take a look at it. You've got that long and lanky uh, Randy Brown, very versatile with his striking. He can, you know, very well rounded as well. But this was a spot here where really it worked out great for Luque, just how he strikes. And early, you saw right away, he is blasting those leg kicks. I mean, one thing about uh, about Randy Brown, he's got those very skinny legs, and it was just a perfect target for Vicente to just chop away. I mean, right away, I, I don't even know how many leg strikes he had, but he was able to land consistently on him, and that was just took Brown out of his rhythm right away. And we already know that the power behind those leg kicks that Luque has, but he just kept piling it up. And there was even a point um, uh, where he dropped uh, um, uh, Brown in that first round, got on top of him, did some ground and pound, but let him get back up, continue to just move forward. That's the thing with, with Luke. He's got that really aggressive style. He puts a lot of pressure on you. He mixes up those leg kicks and just allows to really, you know, allow, his opponent allows him to just break him down when he really has the ability to dictate the pace of the fight. That was what was going on in that first round. Going into that second round, more of the same. I mean, Vicente just chopping away. And there was even one point where he chopped at his legs. It dropped Randy Brown. Um, wasn't too much further after that as he continued to move forward. He had um, Randy Brown kind of in a clinch with his head down. Throws a knee, drops him. End of story. But really from beginning to end, it was all Luke a, Really just kind of dictating that pace, moving forward, and gets the finish in the second round by KO. Uh, now, um... Uh, fighter for that two fights go, he fought Tyron Woodley. <laughs> this one here, I mean, this was a spot here where you know you start to see the the, the decline of, of Tyron Woodley, but this is one here where right away Woodley went and he looked for the takedown. Now, I think that's something that you may see Saturday night with Blah Muhammad, or you're definitely going to see that with Blah Muhammad. He's not going to want to stand with Luke, a, and that was something that Woodley didn't want to do either. He went in, he, he got up in close, and right away, which something we're going to touch on this a little bit later. But something that you do see is that really everyone talks about Luque's striking and his power and his leg kicks and all these things are really great. But he's got, definitely has grappling. He definitely has a, a good foundation when it comes to that. And this really showed it right away when he cut distance. Um, Tyron really kind of up against the fence. Great way to just transition from um, uh, uh, from having his back against the fence and then and then. You know, switching up, having Woodley's back up against the fence, really kind of dictating the pace, landing some nice shots. And again, this was kind of, you know, again, the decline of, of Woodley. But Woodley, you know, throwing the big shots, Vicente answering, and then Vicente landed a big shot, wobbled uh, Woodley. Woodley kind of couldn't really come to, went for a takedown, and then that's when um, Vicente Luque sinks in the Darsh choke, finishes him in the first round. But I think it says a lot. When you take a look at a guy like that, that, again, he's got the power, but he's really mixing in and really showing that he's got the ability 
to, to, you know, hey, is the takedown going to be something that's going to be a path of least resistance? And we're seeing that Vicente is really piecing it all together. Um, so he goes out there and gets a first round submission victory over Tyron Woodley. And then most recently, he fought Michael Chiesa. Now, listen, I, I'm not too high on Michael Chiesa to begin with. I think he's really overrated when it comes to a lot of this stuff. We keep talking about all these other things that he has and his skill set. And he's, you know, fine-tuning his striking. I don't really see it too much there. But this is a fight here where, you know, he did try to bring it. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Vicente tried to bring it to Chiesa, you know, moving in forward, trying to cut distance, to, you know, trying to land the big shots. And this was right away. You really saw that Chiesa was on his bike, running around the outside of the cage, just kind of looking for the angle, kind of looking for an opportunity to kind of either level change or find, find um, a spot to kind of start to counter. And he did. Chiesa was able to kind of get in that level change, found, um, uh, you know, you know, getting, getting um, Luque to his, uh, to his back, getting the opportunity to kind of move from there and then get, you know, sinking in submissions, hunting for submissions. This was a spot here where it looked like it wasn't going to be good for Luque. But this, again shows that he has ability, not just not just on the feet, but again, he's in a terrible spot against Kiesa, who that's that's Kiesa's bread and butter. It's, it's going to be back control. It's going to be, you know, working from, from top position. And he had him exactly where he wanted him. And still, Luke was, was just knowledgeable enough to reverse, get out of danger. And then all of a sudden, he sinks in a choke and a submission on Kiesa, which is impressive. Again, it's not, I'm not that high in Kiesa, but it's still getting that finish and submitting Kiesa in the first round says a lot. So, um, uh, so for, for, uh, for this uh, bout there, you did see him get another first round submission victory for a guy who's known for knockouts and finishing power. On the other side, we've got Bilal Muhammad. He's plus 145. Now, three fights ago, he fought um, Leon Edwards. Now, this is a fight that I know that most people, you know, a lot of people hate Leon Edwards. I mean, that's pretty much what goes, everyone, a lot of people do. Uh, this is a fight here that a lot of people kind of, I think they forget what happened in that first round. You know, you've got the eye poke that happened in the second round, ended the fight, uh, no contest. But if you look at that first, that first round, Bilal wasn't doing jack shit uh, in that fight. And he pretty much kind of was skirting on the outside, you know, throwing these, you know, basic combinations. Leon was landing. Leon was moving forward. Leon, to a guy who, who at times, I guess, can be very um, inactive on the feet, was, was easily outlanding Bilal, you know, um, defending the takedowns, keeping on the outside, pushing good pressure, landing good shots. I mean, it was pretty much, it, it, um, to me, it was a, a first round for, for Leon Edwards, and Bilal really didn't do anything. Volume was low, couldn't really get into a rhythm and on the level changes. I poke happens in the second round, fight ends, end of story. That kind of pushes Leon Edwards in a different direction. But in this position here, you, it, it pushes Bilal, you know, kind of gives him another opportunity to move up the ranks, even though it was an eye poke, even though he lost that first round. But either way, he goes out there and he gets a no contest against Leon Edwards. And so there you have it there. Uh, two fights go, he fought Damian Maia. Now, this is another situation here where... You know, it, it sounds great. You know, it sounds great that he uh, goes out there, he beats Damian Maya um, uh, over three rounds by decision. Great showing there, but it was a lackluster performance from beginning to end from both guys. And you've got Damian Maya, who's 43 years old, you know, has no striking, really has no takedown ability. I mean, he just is an absolute killer. Once he's got a hold of you, he is an absolute killer. Obviously, he's one of the the elite guys when it comes to submissions and just, you know, the overall skill set he has on the mat. But he has just the worst takedown ability at this point in his career. He kind of pulls guard. You know, you've seen that in many of his other fights here. And that was kind of what he was doing here. And even in those situations of just how terrible Maya looked, Bilal, you know, although he won the he won the decision, I think it was two rounds to one, he kept it close. I mean, it was, this fight to me was almost unwatchable. Just how sloppy it was, both guys randomly going for takedowns, sloppily, you know, you know, combinations, very just like one, two wing in it. Uh, it wasn't really much to write home about. And this is a fight that really kind of pushed Bilal up a little bit. You know, oh, he beat Damian Maya, which is again, Maya's a top guy, we got it, but the guy's at the end of his career, he doesn't really offer much offense um, in general, kind of allowing Bilal to kind of maneuver the way he wants to. But either way, he goes out there and he defeats Damian Maya. 
And then most recently, which is an impressive victory for him, against Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Here he goes out there and he, and he wins pretty much every round. He dominated controlling. But again, there's just questions to me here where you're looking at it and you're kind of seeing a guy that, you know, Thompson starting to get up there in age also. Um, but obviously we know if you can get this guy down, he just doesn't have that that ability on the ground. We know that. That's where he's always been very good with kind of really working on his takedown defense, not allowing guys to get him down to the ground and having those position um, um, controlling positions. But it was it, it, it was just one of those spots where he kind of just kept them on top. It wasn't a, an exciting, oh, he's, he dominated them. Yes, he dominated them in scorecards, but really it was just a kind of laying on top, keeping the position for the round and allowing himself to win the scorecards there. So, um, there you have it there on that. So um, with that being said, I think the first thing when you look at these two guys is the first thing we're talking about here is on the feet. Now, it is worlds of difference between both of these guys when it comes to on the feet. You've got Vicente Luque, his versatile striking, um, his durability. I mean, this guy could really go out there. He could take the shots, keep moving forward, not scared to be in the pocket and brawl. Um, he's got the leg kicks. That's his number one weapon that he's going to be utilizing where he sets up his offense, where he's firing out first, or he just finishes with it, or he just always mixes it in. And that is something that a lot of guys are worried about. And then it allows the, the shots to the head start to open up there. Um, but, the, but the thing here is when you're looking at the striking is none of that is what Bilal Muhammad has. I mean, Bilal Muhammad, obviously, again, he's, he's going to be the grinder. He's going to try to get on top of you. He's going to utilize his wrestling. Um, it's not the sexiest kind of way that he's going to go get these victories, but he's able to kind of control positioning from his opponents and get that. But on the feet, Bilal has nothing to offer. I mean, there is nothing that he is going to offer Vicente Luque that, that he's going to be worrying about. So on the feet, it's going to be a world of hurt for Bilal. He's going to be just diving at legs, from beginning to end. So basically, you gotta look at that, and you've gotta give a massive advantage on the feet to Vicente Luque. Now, on the other side of it there, you've got the grappling side. Now, this is where, you know, obviously Bilal's gonna have some advantages. He's gonna, you know, he, you know, the takedown ability, the relentless of it, you know, he's gonna be looking to put um, Vicente's back up against the fence, keeping him there, keeping positioning, working from that angle, you know, chain, um, uh, you know, chaining together some takedowns, you know, put, he's just gonna look to do that. Now, if there's a situation where it does go to the ground, we are, again, we're seeing that Vicente Luque is elevating even more that part. He already has grappling credentials, but he is showing it now with a finish of Tyron Woodley and finishing Michael Chiesa on the ground is really another, you know, feather in his cap of a guy who's really, you know, Chiesa really a specialist when it comes to the ground and outdoing him in that, um, in that realm in the first round. So even if it gets there, I like the fact that Vicente is going to be knowledgeable enough to kind of work in certain positions, keep controlling, know, you know, when he's in a bad position. You saw what he did against Chiesa, where Chiesa had his back, you know, a choke was in deep, and he still is just able to kind of maneuver out and then get out of danger and look to kind of bring his offense in. And that is obviously something big, but a part of this also is that is the style at which Vicente fights. And I think that is really the biggest part of this fight. Um, and when you're looking at Bilal Muhammad, he obviously had, again, we're talking about the takedowns, we're talking about ad nauseum here, but that's all he really offers up. But how do you stop really somebody who's a great wrestler, who's just going to look to shoot, who's just going to be looking to shoot? You have to move forward. You have to keep them on their back foot so they so it's a lot harder to shoot. Now, you hear Daniel Cormier talk about this all the time. A lot of these big-time wrestlers talk about, hey, if you're going to get a wrestler out of rhythm, it has to come from moving forward, pressuring him, keeping him on his back foot. It's a lot harder to go for level changes when you're, when you're walking backwards or you're on your back foot and you're trying to level change. Not going to have enough um, really energy or push or momentum to really kind of level change and get your opponent to the ground. This is where Vicente and his style works perfectly, in my opinion, because now he's going to be able to move forward. He's the kind of guy who's going to be in your face, who's going to move forward. Now, of course, he's going to be worrying about those takedowns, but I don't see that really being enough for him. I think that Vicente doesn't want to be to the ground. Obviously, that's, that's going to be, that's not where he's going to want to be, but he's going to, I think he's okay with it. I think that he knows, hey, I'm, I'm okay down there. It's not that he is, you know, he's Wonderboy Thompson where he just has nothing. 
he's going to have the ability to either reverse certain positions. He looks to submission hunt constantly. You see guys who have taken him down where he's reversed them and submits them. So that is something where I think the submission hunting mixed with this with this forward pressure of Vicente really is just going to allow the leg kicks to be open as Bilal is moving backwards, all the offensive shots as Bilal is moving backwards, and then it's going to be hard for him to really level change and take Vicente down. Vicente down. So. For me here, it's minus 170 here. Um, I'm not going for a method of victory on this one. I'm thinking Vicente straight here. I just don't think Bilal Muhammad is that good. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think he's that good. He's a company man. UFC loves the guy. I just don't see it. I think this is a great setup for Vicente to go out there and just control the action, dominate, find a finish possibly. Um, but for me here, I like Vicente Luque minus 170 to get the finish, to get the job done in the main event. And the other fight we're going to be talking about here is Devin Clark versus William Knight. Now, uh, here we've got um, Devin Clark. He's minus 185, roughly. We've got William Knight as plus 150. Um, so for me here, I'm going to kind of just give this one out uh, without fully, fully diving into it. But the biggest thing for me here was, was most eye-opening was the last fight for each one of these fighters. And the first thing here is you've got Devin Clark who fought uh, Ian Kutilaba. And Kutilaba beat the living shit out of him in this fight. Uh, from the beginning to end, he had top control. He was smacking him around, dropping big shots. Um, you know, really just controlled the action. When he was on top, really, really the ground and pound was there. And not only that, but there was a... I don't know if you guys have seen the picture, but... Um, Devin Clark, where he got his jaw or his gum kind of detached from his face, whatever it was, it wasn't pretty, but I mean, just an absolute beating from uh, Ian Kutilaba uh, going out there, getting the job done, landing the big shots, really the, just a massive amount of just MMA mileage also on Clark and just a lot of damage that he took. Coming off of that and coming into this fight against another guy who's who's somewhat similar, um, heavy-handed, has wrestling. It, I, I think that's a tough situation to overcome. On the other side, though, you've got William Knight, who is coming off of a loss. But this was a, against Maxim Grisham. Grissom. Um, but this was a short notice for him. He came in there. It was a, you know He was overweight. It didn't look that good. Um, and, and I think that is really pushing this line a little bit wider. I think this line should be very close, if not a pick em. Um I don't see that there's any reason at all that that that, that Clark, I, I just can't understand how he's such a big favorite going against William Knight. Um, the other part of this is that, you know, when you're looking at how these guys fight, I think there's a situation where you could see the wrestling nullifying each other, where you could see one guy wrestling the other guy, and then not much too happens, and then it kind of becomes a standing fight. And in that situation there, I do favor Knight. I mean, not that Knight is, has this... You know, he's not this technically sound striker, but he's got the power. And I think that is going to really wear on Clark throughout the fight here. So um, I don't really see many ways that Devin Clark goes out there and wins. Now, could he be on top and just tire out Knight because Knight has had some cardio issues? Possible. But also, um, Clark has not looked great deep into fights either. So there's definitely a part of me here where you could just go Knight via knockout. Um, but I'm not too sure which way I'm going to go on that part if I'm looking for a method. But for me here, I like William Knight plus 150. This is dog or pass for me here. There's no reason that Devin Clark should be minus 185, minus 190, pretty much against anybody. Um, so for me, as my other free play, I am taking William Knight plus 150 as another free play. So those are my free plays for UFC on ESPN. Really excited about it. Getting back to business. So, um... Again, if you're looking for my wager talk plays, I have a 5% best bet play up right now. Out of the last 12 months, I'm 9-3 and three on those best bet max plays. So uh, take a look if you're interested, and um, let's see how we do. This is Kyle Anthony's UFC Betting Show, and I'll see you next time.